no news of my father came forth from the other day, and somber restlessness took hold of me. Originally, it seemed Hijikata granted me approval to accompany the captains on their rounds through Kyoto to search for my dad. Then he called me in. Excuse me! I saw Okita and Heisuke had been summoned along with me, and I felt a partial sense of relief. It did a little to calm my chattering nerves, and I didn't want to be in a bad spot with Hijikata. You called me? Hijikata seemed to be in a foul mood, so I decided it was best to act with tact in his presence. I was thinking about the search for Kodo, but maybe it's best to put a halt to it for now. What? But why? We just started looking for him. Stopping now would surely cause any of our leads to run dry. His words stunned me. How could he back out on this? Hijikata remained deeply composed. We have reports of activity from the Choshu, and they did not bode well for us. It'd be highly dangerous for you to be out and about. I'd heard how the warriors of the Chosu Domain associate with the Imperial Nationalist Party. For some reason, they find foreigners repulsive, using brute force to prevent any foreign presence. All of their faith is aligned with the Emperor. The Shinsengumi, on the other hand, serve the Shogun, meaning they are directly opposed. If the Chosu is active, it could mean that my own goal is of little concern to the Shinsengumi. I might become something of a burden to them. So, are you asking me to refrain from joining the rounds until things with the Chosu Domain settle? Hijikata nodded and turned towards the two men. That being said, as of right now, she is not to accompany any rounds with any captains. Oh, I get it now. That's why you pulled us in here, right? Heisuke seemed two steps behind Hijikata's words, until this very moment where it seemed to click. You know, she never caused any trouble during any round she joined us in. I kind of feel like it shouldn't be a problem if she tagged along. Yeah, even if something were to happen, as long as she doesn't get involved, it should be fine. <laughs> I mean, it's not like she can run away from us if things get sticky, right? I won't run. I knew he wasn't being serious, but I couldn't stand to keep my mouth shut. I made up my mind the minute the men of the Shinsengumi agreed to help me find my father. I made a vow to never run from the Shinsengumi for as long as they helped me find my father. My desire to find my father showed no signs of showing, even since I first arrived in Kyoto. I will keep my vow. So please, please allow me to continue looking for my father. I bowed to Okita, keeping my eyes locked with his. His smirk, however, shrunk slowly as he gazed towards me, caught in between words to say. <laughs> if you stay with us, you're putting yourself at risk. If you want that risk, feel free to join us. I mean, we have witness reports that fit the profile and description of Kodo. You may have a point, but are witness reports enough justification to put her in harm's way? What if you're wrong? What if she's exposed? Do none of you understand? You're placing an unnecessary burden on yourselves. I lied prostrate before him, and Hijikata simply sighed heavily. <sighs> You'd better follow the orders of every captain you join. No ifs, ands, or buts. Am I clear? Yes, of course, thank you so much! I didn't know how else to show my gratitude, so I bowed deeply again. I 
I'm leaving it to your discretion over whether or not you're going to join them. That's on you. All right. I had to make sure this was the best decision. There was something in his demeanor that made me unsure of my desire to leave the compound. Still, if I was with Okita or Heisuke, I'm sure I'd be safe and well protected. On the other hand, my presence could be an undue burden on him. What was I to do? After contemplating, I decided to stay in. I couldn't convince myself that I wouldn't be a burden to them during dangerous situations. Grrr. Still, it was disheartening to think about. Huh? Another dull day spent inside. Throughout the past six months, I was allowed to finally search for my father on the rounds, and I felt like a part of the house by contributing. Even though sometimes I was occupied with cleaning or cooking, it seemed like I was serving my part to the Shinsengumi in a meaningful way. I spent most of my time with the captains, but there were many opportunities to chat with the warriors and come to know them as real people. Maybe they were starting to think of me as a warrior in training, rather than Hijikata's page. These wiring thoughts made me so anxious I was turning numb. The idea that I had become so dependent on the Shinsengumi at this moment? What should I do today? I was resigned to the consequences of my decision. Something that felt like I was wasting away the tender moments of my life in these headquarters. I was in short, with nothing to do. All right. I decided to enter the inner courtyard, where maybe I could feel a pleasant breeze tingle my face in the shade. The quaintness may calm me down. Damn it. Alas, no winds blew through the courtyard today. No reprieve from the harsh sun bearing down upon this dry emptiness. I had a feeling it was going to be a bad day. Shade was the best I could hope for, it seemed. I sighed, sitting in whatever shade I could find. Something occurred to me as the sun roasted Kyoto. Oh, right! My father's been here, hasn't he? They'd mentioned it, but they hadn't told me why. Was he tending to the injured? Or perhaps educating the Shinsengumi on how to avoid illness? Maybe he'd intended to stay here long term. My father never mentioned to have been with the Shinsengumi. He'd visited only a few times or so I'd been told. If he'd really been their doctor, then he would have visited more far more often. Which left me with the question, why? It was extremely clear to me that the Shinsengumi had plenty of secrets, but I grew suspicious that these secrets deeply implicated my father as well. No, that can't be right. Can it? I shook my head again, trying my best to dispel the dark thoughts taking shape. What can't be right? I spun around to find that Sanan had walked behind me, utterly undetected and unannounced. Oh, Sanan! Is it alright for you to be walking around? Please, I'm no bedridden invalid. There is nothing wrong with me. There was a hint of coldness to his words. Although my left hand is something of an invalid, I couldn't bear to look at the sad, twisted smile he gave me. His arm hadn't healed, and it seemed certain now that it never would. The rest of the captain seemed sure that he would never be able to use his arm as he'd done before. And what are you doing? Are you allowed out of your room? You haven't been given the run of our headquarters, I'm sure. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. They usually let me walk around as I pleased, so long as I didn't go into anyone's room. But I knew that, technically, I was confined to my room. Any freedom given to me was simply a courtesy.
privacy. In other words, Sanon was right. If he decided to chastise me for being in the courtyard, I had no reasonable response. There were some things I wanted to think about. I hoped the courtyard would be breezy. The moment the words were out of my mouth, I realized they sounded far more like child excuses than a valid explanation. When you sneak about without permission, it makes you seem as if you have something to hide. I'm sorry. Still, I was beginning to grow accustomed to the subtle cruelty that seemed to accompany each word from Sanan's mouth. All right, I'm going back to my room, then. I turned and began to walk away. Sanon's unpleasantness had started after he was wounded during his trip to Osaka. He spent most of his time locked in his room now, and he was quickly to lash out at any others in response. I knew the loss of his arm hurt him more than I could understand. But I wished he could go back to being the warm, kind man he was originally. Um... I turned around to see him still standing there. It's really hot out today. You should try and stay out of the sun. Um, please take care of yourself. <laughs> I gave him a nervous little laugh, and he responded with a chuckle of his own. His smile didn't look forced. Thank you. Take care of yourself as well. Okay! The sauna and I'd first met was still here. My spirits lifted. I ran back to my room. It was later that evening that the compound exploded with activity was walking down the hall when I heard footsteps and turned to see Nagakura coming along but towards me. Um, Nagakura? What's that for? He glanced down almost absently at his hands, holding a candle and an exceptionally long needle. Uh, one of the Chosu guys who picked up isn't talking. Ijikata's gonna talk to him personally, but he said he didn't have the right, uh, tools and sent me to get these. I don't understand. Err, uh, look, kid. Ignorance is bliss, alright? Don't think about it too much. He gave another bark of laughter, turned his back on me, and walked off. As the sun began to set, the activity in the compound reached a fever pitch. It was so busy that I couldn't even help with making dinner. The commotion was overwhelming. Hey, Skay! He shot past my door, then wheeled back around. What happened? All the men are running around. Any word from that Choshu prisoner? Yeah, the guy finally broke. It looks like they're having a meeting right now. We're getting ready for a raid. Oh. Heisuke went on to explain that the Shinsengumi would be splitting into two groups and searching locations at opposite ends of the city. Honda would take 10 men to the Ikeda Inn, and Hijikata would take 24 to the Shikoku Inn. I heard they might be at the Shikoku. Gotta say, I'm kinda pissed that the chief are sending me to the Ikeda. They'd send more men with Hijikata because they thought he'd be seeing action. Honda and his men were to make sure they covered all their bases. You mean there aren't even 40 men ready? Yeah, kinda sucks, cause there's so many men who get sick when we need them the most. I'd known that the heat in close quarters made some men sick, 
But I hadn't known it was so many. Heisuke sighed. We sent word to the Aizu and the Judiciary Commissioner, but it looks like they don't care. Sounds like you've got your work cut out for you. Unfortunately, there wasn't much I could offer him apart from sympathy. I had a feeling it was going to be a difficult night. After all, the men capable of hiding had left for their respective assignments. Sun uncalled for me. I'm sure it was only out of courtesy, but the chief has asked me to protect the compound. Sonon's passive-aggressive attitude reared its head. It's mostly empty, of course, but someone may try to attack us for that very reason. I must ask you to stay where I can see you. I may need to give you orders should the worst occur. Okay. I hesitated a moment, then spoke. Does that mean... You'll protect me? I wasn't sure why, but he laughed at that. <laughs> well, I should hope I'll be of more use than the men who've been confined to their beds, at least. Was I supposed to be... happy? The smile was so sad, I wasn't sure what to say. It seemed to hurt him most when the other men were out fighting. All he could do was wait. The silence between us stretched out until the door to our room suddenly opened without a sound. Colonel Sonnen, we've confirmed that the Choshu are meeting at Ikeda. The Ikeda Inn? Oh dear. That's less than desirable. The Shin Sengumi has never been good with chance. His tone was light, but his face was serious, and with good reason. They'd been certain Shikoku was the right location, and had sent only half as many men to Ikeda. Yamazaki, can you do me a favor? The man whom he'd called Yamazaki nodded curtly. He is the Shinsengumi officer and spy, as well as a member of the Watch. Despite not living in the Yagi residence, he is aware of my situation. First, go tell Hijikata that the enemy is meeting at Ikida. He should still be on his way to Shikoku. And I'm sorry to trouble you with it, but I need you to take this child with you as well. Wait! Yamazaki seemed just as surprised. I paused before thinking about what's next. Why me? I feel like if I were to go with him, I would only be a burden. Why would he choose me? I can't stand the thought of getting in someone's way and being the reason something bad happens. You may be a burden, but at the end of it, you could also save someone's life if you're lucky. Sonon responded, giving me a cold gaze. There may be Ronan out to intercept you. And besides, there is a chance that Choshu has reinforcements. If your message were to be intercepted, then you will be sure not to reach Hijikata in time. Sonon finished with the soft smile I hadn't seen him use for weeks. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yes, if the worst should happen, I can hold off any Choshu Ronin and give her the message. What? It sounded as if they were suggesting if things went badly, Yamazaki would sacrifice himself. Yes, of course. I doubt it will come to that. We're short of men right now which means there's more I need you to do. You'll need to notify the Aizu and the Judiciary Commissioner as well. That would have Yamazaki running all across Kyoto. I suppose it really drove home just how thin the Shinsengumi was stretched. And there's no...
no other person that could do this job? Um, what about Shimida? Shimida is another Shinsengumi spy who is trusted enough with knowledge of my situation. Saman shook his head. The Shinsengumi need every single member they can get, and Shimida was with the Shikoku team. Which means that, apart from Yamazaki, I was the only one that could possibly serve as a messenger at the moment. You're Yukimura, right? I heard you know a little about how to protect yourself. Yes, I do. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee your safety. If you can manage, you are welcome to join me. If I tried to run away while we were out, I had no doubt that he would kill me without hesitation. This mission is his priority, not my life. Even so, I'll go. I can take care of myself. You don't need to worry about me. Sonam gave me a small smile. I knew he wanted to join the battle more than anyone, but we both knew that wasn't possible. The least I could do was carry out my mission. Very well. I accept your request, Colonel. He bowed, then as he stepped out of the room and turned to me. Run with all your might. I took off after him, my legs working as hard as they could. Into the dark street we ran. I discovered quickly that half a year indoors did little for my physique, and I was out of shape. After only a few blocks, I was gasping for breath. Yamazaki, who was running ahead of me, suddenly stopped and looked sharply behind us. No matter what happens, follow this street. Don't look back. Don't tell me someone's behind us. You don't need to know that. Seems like Yamazaki's hunch was right. What should I tell Yamazaki? I'll stay behind. Yamazaki, please, you should go. Don't be a fool. What could you possibly do by staying behind? If I distract the enemies, then you could go in the meantime. If we'll need a lure, then it's going to be me. Run for it! Yamazaki wasn't looking to take no for an answer, so I nodded in good faith. I looked to what lay ahead for me. As I stepped into the next intersection, I saw a flash of metal from the corner of my eye. Keep going. I'll catch up in a moment. Just keep running until you see a white uniform. Right. I kept running. I pretended I didn't hear the sounds of swords ringing against one another behind me and ran. My knees felt weak and my legs shook, but I kept going. They'd have to collapse or tear themselves to pieces before I'd stop. Even so, I felt so slow. I wanted to cry out, to scream at my body to go faster, faster! Ah! A bright light suddenly cut through the darkness, and I placed my hand over my eyes from the glare. My heart stopped. Was it Choshu soldiers? I froze. What the hell are you doing? I very nearly began to cry with relief. Ichikata was not dressed in the usual blue jacket, but rather a bright white uniform to be seen in dimly lit places. Instead, I simply collapsed as Haruda reached out to grab me. Hey, you all right? If you left headquarters without permission, Ichikata's gonna kill you. I grabbed a hold of Haruda's hand and pulled my body to its feet. 
I wanted to tell him I had permission to leave and explain it was all right for me to be there, but I was so winded that I could barely speak. Besides, I wasn't sent to Hijikata to make excuses. I took as deep of a breath as my shuddered lungs could manage before speaking. <gasps> Th they're... they're meeting at Ikada! Suddenly, Hijikata's expression changed. Then they're at Ikida. I nodded rapidly. Are you sure? Hijikata gestured toward me. Son had lost his arm, not his brain. The kid didn't run away. The colonel sent us this message. I'm pretty impressed you found us. I didn't think you knew Kyoto that well, kid. Ya... Ya... Yamazaki! I finally got some breath back, and I did my best to tell them what had happened. What about the Aizu and the Commissioner's men? Are they on their way to Ikida? I just shook my head. Ichikata thought for a minute, and then spoke. Saito, Harada, you take our men to Ikida. I need to go deal with something. Harada and Saito nodded curtly, then turned to their business. Kyoto will be dangerous for you alone. Stay with us, or go of Hichikata. I still lacked the breath to respond properly, so I simply nodded. We both knew they couldn't leave me here, but whom should I accompany? The prospect of being alone with him was rather frightening, but for reasons I still don't understand, I decided to go with Hichikata. We were quiet for a while. I felt like I should say something. I wasn't sure what. Uh, um, instead, I kept quiet. After a moment, he glanced down at me. Good job with that message. It might have given us the advantage we need. I never thought Ijikata of all people would praise me for anything. My heart fluttered momentarily in my chest. But what did he mean by advantage? If the battle at the Ikida Inn had begun, it didn't seem like we had much of an advantage at all. We stepped from the Central Avenue. Um, Hijikata, why are we out here on the street? What kind of man tries to hide all the time? I blinked, not sure what to make of that. Yamazaki appeared beside us without making a sound. Yamazaki, you're safe! He didn't seem to have been hurt at all. Thank goodness. Yamazaki's eyes slid to me for a moment, then back to Hijikata. You're aware of the situation at Ikeda, I assume? Colonel Sanen ordered me to notify the Aizu and the Judiciary Commissioner, but... Yeah. I'll have new orders for you in a few minutes. Stick close for now. Understood. Your commander needs to go and have a word with a bunch of useless bastards. Deep in his cold eyes, I saw a spark of anger. They appeared as the words came out of his mouth. Lines of government soldiers marching towards us. There were hundreds of them, marching across the entire width of the street, several rows deep. Now I understand why Hijikata took us out into the street. We would never have seen the government force as we shimmied through the back alleys. There was something about their march so slow and unconcerned that lit the fires of anger in my eyes. The rest of the men are still fighting at the inn. The Shinsengumi had few soldiers able to fight, but they were risking their lives for Kyoto. Did 
Didn't these men have the same responsibility? Why weren't they rushing to help us at the end? Perhaps my anger was more obvious than I realized because Hijikata gave a snort of laughter. <laughs> don't worry. I'll make sure they don't screw us. He stepped forward into the very middle of the street, directly in front of the advancing soldiers. All he did was move a few feet and turn to face him. But he held such authority in his movements. He could have easily been at the head of an army. The Shinsengumi are currently conducting an official investigation of the Ikeda Inn. You will not interfere. You will not enter the Ikeda Inn. Even I could see that the government women were going to protest Hijikata's proclamation when Yamazaki leaned over to whisper in my ear. If we let these men walk into the inn, then they'll take credit for subduing this Choshu threat. Gumi had done. It just didn't seem fair. But, but, but it's the men of the Shinsengumi who are risking their lives. Then you see now how little respect they have for the Shinsengumi. The commander is single-handedly protecting the Shinsengumi right now. If we allow them to step into the Ikida Inn, they will spread tales of their false heroism. All that we may do here tonight will be in vain if we allow them to front the raid. That is why the commander is trying to prevent the Aizu domain from intruding. Yamazaki held Hijikata in such high regard. So, when Hijikata said we have an advantage, this is what he was referring to. But, but we must... You really think you can fit all these men in there? The best you'll be able to do is surround it. Unless you really want to send them in there to die. There's a fight going on. If you value the lives of your men, I suggest you stay put. Heiji Kata's tone, as much as his words, left no room for argument. Until the battle ended, he stood his ground, and not a single man challenged him. I hope you like and subscribe. If you want more, click the notification bell as well. I really appreciate your love and attention to me and my comrades. I hope you continue to support us further.